Greetings, greetings, everybody. Welcome to our broadcast. We are broadcasting live on Facebook Live. We say thank you for your continued support. Continued support. This is the coronavirus pandemic global prayer revival. I am very, very excited. Uh, all of our guests are online, except the brother in Kenya. He's still having network issues. But we praise God for Pastor Terry, who's joined us at the bottom. Uh, he's out of Johannesburg, South Carolina. Woo, woo, woo. Uh, the brother is very strong in the Lord. Uh, he's going to have an opportunity to share his testimony. Above him, you see uh, Evangelist Goodluck Uwuzer. Uh He's a good brother out of Nigeria. Uh, to his right is... Um, uh, our guest soloist, Minister of God, Mr. Jay Whitley, and at the top next to me, we have Pastor DJ Knox out of Lansing, Michigan. Brothers and sisters, I want to share a video with you. Uh, we have had uh, some extreme measures going on here in Michigan, specifically Flint, Michigan. Uh, most of you probably will recognize the name Flint because we've recently had some water issues. Uh, they had some poison contaminated water in the area. And so this, this is the same city in which they had that situation with the water. And I'm gonna play this video with you as soon as I can share my screen. And I want you to pay attention to this here. It really just took me by surprise. Let's see, where are we at? Okay. And I had it queued right up for us. Here we go. Can you guys, can you brothers see that? Can you see my screen? Here we go. See your screen, but it can't see. Okay. okay. Can you, you can see that? Yeah. Yes. Okay, good. Okay, let's, let's go. You know, um, before you go, I just, I want you to hear uh, earlier, this was earlier tonight. I had an opportunity to speak to Magic Johnson about how coronavirus is impacting the black community, and he, he said this. Listen to this, please. You know what happened in Flint, Michigan, in my home state, should never happen, and I just feel so sorry for the families that lost the loved one, the security card, and uh, we got shot. That should never happen. Look, we all got to be patient. We got to work with each other. So I'm praying for that family. That, that lost a loved one. And it, it, we, we can't have that. We cannot have that. We, we just want you to know that you have so much love and support coming from all over the country. And I just want you to know that. And I just, if, if you say whatever you want, that's it. That's all I'm saying. Hey, thank you, everybody, for the support call. It's overwhelming. But I appreciate my baby to appreciate everything and everyone that has reached out to us and has been here to all the friends that be kind. So I just appreciate everything. The GoFundMe has started for your family. The information is up on the screen right now. It is GoFundMe.com um, and it's slash S slash donation for Uber. Uh, and I hope that you guys stay in touch and you let me and my staff know if you need anything. And I really thank you for coming on tonight. Okay? You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. And listen, y'all, everybody out there, this is simple. Don't do this. The man was just doing his job. Everybody's kept right now. Everybody is on edge. People are hurting. Just follow the direction and the rules. Obviously, people don't need to be shot. We need to be pushing park workers in the pools. We need to be fighting with police officers and spinning in their faces and stomping on flags and, you know, taking guns. Uh, whether it's your right to carry or not, to stay housed with intimidating people, definitely not need to be shooting and killing people. Just they're whack. Okay. So that was uh, the woman that you saw in the video. Her name was Latrina Munner, Munnerlin, Latrina Munnerlin. 
and her husband's name is Calvin, Mr. Calvin Munnerlin. They called him Duper, uh, Super Duper, because he was really strong. He liked to work out, and his mom gave him that name. He was on the front line, an essential worker, doing the work that he was called to do, and because he told the lady not to come in the store because she didn't have a mask on, she went home, got a couple of gangsters, came back and shot and killed Mr. Munnerlin. Mm. So I just wanted to highlight an example of how the enemy is using this coronavirus against the kingdom of God. And that's one of the reasons why we are here. We're here to pray, uh, to preach, and to worship. And we want to bring hope to a situation that looks hopeless. Uh, I asked Brother Jay if he would go ahead and prepare a word for us, a song for us. Praise God. Lord, we know the battle's not ours, it's yours, Lord God. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. There's no pain in Jesus can't feel. No hurt he cannot hear. Yeah, yeah. For all things work according to his perfect, his perfect will. Ooh, no matter what. Mm, you're going through. Remember, God is only using you for the battle is not yours. It's the Lord's. Mm, and there's no sadness, no sadness. Jesus can't feel, and there's no sorrow, he, he cannot heal, mm. things were according to the masters, the masters, so no matter what you're going through, remember that God, God is only using you for the battle is not yours, it's the Lord's. Oh, Yeah. The battle's not up. It's 
not yours. Oh, it's not yours. It's not yours. It's not mine. It's not ours. It's battle. Yeah, yeah. Battle. Oh, it's the Lord's. It's not yours. It's the Lord's. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Brother Jay. Hallelujah. That was beautiful, man. Thank you. Right on time. Perfect song. Thank you, man. Uh, Pastor DJ, I'd ask that you usher us to the uh, throne of the God, throne of God. Yeah. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just come before you today, God, lifting up uh, everyone, Lord, that just needs more of you, and we all need more right now in this hour, dear Heavenly Father. Lord, every single day we need more of you. Uh, every single second we need more of you. So God, we ask right now for your healing. We ask right now for your peace, your peace that transcends all understanding, the peace of knowing that we may be in trial and tribulation and storms and in and, and, and all types of mess, dear Heavenly Father, but we have peace in knowing that you are with us and that you have yeah. our backs as long as we do your will, as long as we abide by your way. So, Lord, we come up under your will right now in the name of Jesus. We submit to your will. We submit to your way. We submit to your love. We submit to your peace. We submit to your strength, God. Lord, you are sovereign and you are holy and you are righteous. Help us to be holy. Help us to be righteous. Help us yes. to be more holy and righteous right now in the name of Jesus. And Holy Spirit, we call forth your healing power right now in the name of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus right now over the whole globe over the whole world, not just our communities, but the whole world is our neighbor. Right now, dear Heavenly Father, we ask for your healing right now. We ask for your peace right now. We ask for your comfort right now. Your word says we should not worry because tomorrow has enough worries of its own. So Lord, give us peace right now. Calm all anxiety. Take it away right now. Take away the stress and the depression. Take away all of these things that are not of you right now in the name of Jesus. And, and when it's taken away, God, we ask that you replace it with your love. We ask that you replace it with your anointing. We ask that you replace it with your strength. We ask that you replace it with your knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Give us wisdom in this hour. Give us knowledge in this hour. Give us understanding in this hour. Give us peace right now in this very hour. We thank you and we praise you that you are not only God, but you are God all by yourself. You are the one and only true God. You are a forgiving God. And we thank you for this forgiveness that you forgave us even while you were on the cross and the world was shouting crucify, you still forgave us, Jesus. Your blood shed on the cross that we may have this opportunity to come before you and to petition you for healing, but to petition you for repentance in this very hour, for peace, for forgiveness right now. Forgive us, God. For the things that Forgive we've done us. that we know and that we don't know, God, we ask for your forgiveness right now in the name of Jesus. And we will be careful to give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Mm. Even when they were shouting, crucify, crucify him, he forgave us. Yeah. Woo! Wow, yeah, what a God, yeah. what a God, what a God. Pastor Terry, I would like for you to take a, a, a bit to uh, let the folks know who you are. Uh, I first met Pastor Terry about a week ago, maybe a week and a half ago online. And then we talked, I believe it was last weekend, somewhere thereabouts. And uh, we had a beautiful time. It was too short. But we had a beautiful time. Uh, Pastor Terry is a strong man of God. If you would tell the people about your ministry, um, but I definitely would like, if, you, if you're comfortable, to tell them how you met God. Tell them how you met God. Uh, I'll give them a preface. Pastor Terry's his family, 
He's Indian. His family's from India. His great grandfather migrated to South Africa. And that's how we ended up in South Africa. And so it's really amazing, uh, his story. But I'm going to shut up right there. Pastor Terry, go ahead and let us know what's going on. Glory, glory, glory to God. Hi, guys. Thank you for the opportunity. It's a God at any time now. And this is God's purpose and plan. And the one thing I want to glorify God is to tell you how Jesus met with me. I was strong in Hinduism. I never knew Jesus. And when my late wife was oppressed, uh, demon oppressed, because all she told me is, uh, and I got married to uh, a Christian girl and I was Hindu. And I told her, I said, I don't believe in your God because I come from generations and generations from my Hinduism background, which is quite the old, one of the oldest religions. And in my family, you're not allowed to marry out of your religion. So going further to that, we moved off and we lived together. And then she became demon oppressed. Hmm. And the most important thing is I took her, I thought she was off her head because I didn't know about demonic warfare and prince and priorities and rulers of darkness. Only now that I understand it. And when I took her to a Hindu psychiatrist, the Hindu psychiatrist, and it took me years to understand the Holy Spirit was there in that meeting. He took a highlighter, a Hindu guy took a highlighter, gave me a New Testament Bible and highlighted scriptures for me to read. Wow. And he said, when you go home, you remember the Hindus light a lamp, we idol worship and light a lamp. And I went to the lamp, I said, if you my God, how can you allow this filth into my home to destroy my marriage? Then I said, okay, Show me a sign. If you're such a big God, Jesus, show me in the lamp. And the flame of the lamp went to a cross. And that night, it's about 11, 11 p.m. that night. It was the only night you can get the peace. There was no dogs barking. There was no, not a sound. And then this image that came into the home, into this room, was a heavy glow. And Jesus walked in. All he told me is, do not look at me because you're unclean. I didn't understand what was unclean because obviously I don't know the Bible. And then, and then he told me, you tried to kill yourself many a times and I was there. Wow. And the devil tried to steal you many times, but I saved you. That's why the cross is so important to me. People, and I went on the 23rd of December that happened in 1988. And it was 25th when I went to a church in Durban, not being in Durban. And... It was 500 people, and they asked me to give my testimony. And when I went there, I said, why did anybody didn't tell me about Jesus? Mm. We take it for granted that we mm. know Jesus. But until you meet him and know him, yeah. then you will mm. know that. And I think my brother said last week, first love. Yeah. Coming back to the first love. And that is where, when I ask the Lord, tell me what must I speak today about? He says, humility is to humble yourself and surrender yourself to the God, the Most High. Yeah. And if you surrender yourself and you, you, you cut just everything away from you and let him come into you. Remember, we need to walk with him. We need to walk with him. You walk side by side with Jesus. Yeah. And he will show you the right steps. And I think all you guys know about the footprints in the, in the sand. Yeah. And the times where you're down, he carries you. Yeah, yeah. And that's the way I came to know the Lord. And unfortunately, my, la my late wife passed away. But even when I became a Christian, my son was told that he's not going to survive. And he was two and a half months in ICU. And the Muslim doctor told me he'd never seen a couple that can pray and stand in agreement from 5.30 in the morning till half past 11 at night fasting and praying mm. and wow. 11 children that died in that ward my son survived and he said wow. it's only through your god a muslim people a, a, a doctor tells me it's only your god so wow. our god and i can tell you something i un understand hinduism through and through i didn't have the same peace that i have that i am a child of god now and he made me a man of god and time i gave my heart to the lord in 1988 I never went back. I stood, but it's not all about me. It's all about him. It's all glory. And I've got my master's just to learn more about him. And now I'm into doing my doctorate just to, wow. know, to empower myself to understand more of him 
not for titles and that means nothing titles mean nothing but to know him further no deeper deeper intimacy with him that's a you, you know when i say people when i drive and he's next to me and i when i when i had really when i pray for people and people don't understand it i even go across over to heaven he takes me to heaven and i pray for strangers in durban uh 600 k's away a pastor's wife but i didn't know from the bar so i even told her what a late son uh should call her and i don't know those people for, for from eve even a driver that that came that needed prayer he says back is so and his late daughter came through and people don't understand that the anointing is to get closer to god is the anointing this virus is an evil virus we come against every yeah everything against it because it's yeah. an evil intention of man creating a a virus to, to eradicate human and the devil is behind it thank you my brother i think i took a lot of your time so it's anything else you would like to know you expand further oh, you, no you this perfect it's perfect uh I, I want to come back to you here at a moment and you can share some words of encouragement. Uh, and, and also with, when we come back, if you could let us know how this virus is affecting your community. Uh, I want to go over to uh, a little further north to Nigeria, uh, to Evangelist Goodluck Iwuzer. Um Evangelist and I have been uh, fast friends. Um, I trust and hope that we will become lifelong friends, a strong brother. Uh, his father uh, was a pastor and a minister, and a lot of people in his family are as well. Uh-oh. Oh, it looks like we lost him for a brief, a brief minute. Hopefully he'll be back. Uh, I'm going to pray right now. Father, our God, Hello. we come before your throne, God. We ask that your will would be done, Father. Father God, I ask that you would protect the networks, Father God. I ask that you would protect the airways, Father. We know that you have complete authority over the air, this atmosphere, God. We know we have you have complete authority of all of your creation, Father God. God, I ask that you would come in and make the line stable, Father God. We thank you for your plan of salvation. Jesus, we thank yes. you for your obedience and actions on the cross. Holy Spirit, we thank you for the wisdom and the knowledge and the comfort that you give to humanity. God, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Brother Wizard, if you could go ahead, take the floor and talk to us. Go ahead, go ahead, brother. Good luck. God bless you. I want to thank God for this great privilege uh, he has given to us today. It's a great privilege. Uh, before I go ahead, I just want to sing a little song to God Almighty. He alone uh, gave us life and strength to be alive to this moment. And my song goes like this. You are all the martyrs. 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 I will make room for you where you and I will live. You are all the martyrs. Jesus, you are all the martyrs. You are all the martyrs. You are all the martyrs, Jesus. You are all the martyrs. You are all the martyrs. That you will make room for two Lord, where you and I will live. You are all the martyrs. You are all the mother, Elema, 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
You are the great and mighty God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. to be praised. You are beautiful in all situations. You are the God of the whole world. You are the great and mighty God. You are to be praised. Beautiful in our situation, you are the God of the whole world. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just want to speak on it. I just want to speak on the topic that says the power of fear, the power of fear. Mm. When I was looking into what is the world today, I look at the length of things, how it is going, how people are dying, and how the virus are being contacted, and everything in it. And I find out that there is a power of fear. There are demons in charge of fear that have been going all over the country, affecting people and killing them before their time. I would like us to look to, to the book of Isaiah chapter 43, verse 1 to, uh, to 7. And it says, but now this is what the Lord said, he who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. I will take it gradually. I will take it gradually. God has designed his children for his use, for his purpose. If you are a child of God, you don't need to fear anything. The power of fear to humanity can destroy the destiny of a man. Mm. When you are a fearful person, you cannot be able to go at length. And you will end up in a quiet, quiet north. As an ambassador of Christ, you are a soldier. And you are in the, in the forefront of the world. So you can try the day or any serpent or any tragedy that may come your way. The Lord is on top of the matter. So he said, I have summoned you by name. Look at that. What is your name? My name is Gula. He has summoned me by name and tell me to go out to the world and preach the gospel. Mm -hmm. Say, you are mine. God has said to you that you have forgot. Do you really know who you are? The God mm. is happy. When you are touched by someone, the person is touching God. When someone maltreats you, the person is maltreating God. I will read verse two. Okay. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, I will be with you. When you walk in through the fire, you will not burn. Mm. The flame will not set you ablaze. Mm. The flame will not set you ablaze. Look at the promise of Amen. the fire. If someone can redeem himself and stand in the forefront of war as a soldier, you should know there is someone who sent you. And that person who sent you is willing to support you at any point in time. Let me just use the soldiers of Nigeria, where I come from, as an example. And they are going to Sambisa Forest to hotel the Boko Haram. The president of Nigeria and the, 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 uh, the, the army, the, the head, the soldiers, other head departments that are involved to settle their case or find their ammunition. They are always there. And those ones that are inside the bush for the war front, they are always bold enough. Why? Because they know 
that their organ or their, their superior masters is at their back. Now, I want to bring it to this point that God has said, even though you pass through the river, I will be with you. Yeah. Even though you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you That's are right. passing through the fire, I will be with you. Yeah. The fire will not let you are blessed, my dear brother. As you are listening to our voice, God will do a miracle that will change your name. A blessings of the Lord that passes understanding come from the power of boldness, favor and zeal to God. Power of boldness, favor and zeal. I, I, I repeat myself, favor and zeal to God. You must be zealous about the things of God, and when you are zealous, we run away. Yeah. So I will read verse 3. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt for your ransom. I gave Israel for your ransom. I gave Egypt, sorry, for your ransom. Did you see? Your enemy can become a ransom to you. <laughs> No, when you're supposed to die, when you're supposed to die, God will use your enemy in place of you because you are choosing child of God, a choosing generation of peculiar people. You are not ordinary. So don't be afraid because there is someone bigger than the whole world that's at your back. Look at what he told us. Yeah. Look at what he told us from the book of John. Chapter 1 from verse 1. In the beginning was the world. And the world was with God. And the world was God. Look at it. I am speaking a word now. And the word I'm speaking is God. Yeah. And that word exists from the beginning. Yeah. So is there anything here? I have to preach the gospel. As a child of God, God said, do not fear anything. Do not be afraid of the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. The Bible made me to understand from verse 4. Since you are precious and honor in my sight, look at it, you hear me? <clears throat> and because I love you, I will give people in exchange for you. I will give people in exchange for you. Nation in ancient for your life. Mm. Amen. We have come to liberate the soul of people. And through the power of God, God has taken us so precious and honor in his sight. We are honorables. Mm. Just tell yourself I'm honorable. Amen. Because you are honorable. God will uh -huh. exchange your life with people's life. Amen. God will exchange your life with people's life. Mm -hmm. I will read verse 5. Amen. He said, afraid. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. Yeah. I will I'm bring your you. children from the east. I will bring your children from the east, says the Lord. And I will Say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not hold them up. Bring my son for a father and a daughter from the end of the earth, and everyone who called by my name, whom I have created for my glory, whom I have formed, amen. Did you see? Anyone who called, anyone who is called, by that your name. Who is that, that name we are talking about? By the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah. Remember what he said from the book of Philippians, chapter 2, verse 9. He said, The name of Jesus has been lifted up above every other name. There are the mention of the name of Jesus, every new vows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I want to tell 
I want to ask a question here. If Jesus Christ has all power in heaven and there on earth, you never act. Which one is the devil holding? For me, I always tell people that the devil has no power over my life. Why? Because Jesus went to the Hades and collected the key of yeah, Hades. Yeah, they stand yeah. there still as yeah. soldiers. Yeah. They stand there still as soldiers saluting Jesus. Even the devil was the one that opened the Hades because he was the one holding the key. He saluted Jesus. When Jesus came with power and authority, he gave Jesus key. And we ask that dead, where is that power? Dead, where is that stand? <laughs> yeah. I want to know Amen. if there anyone who has received an answer to this question. Is there anyone who has received an answer to this question? Nobody. The Lord is telling us, do not fear. Do not fear the terror. That man who is telling you you will die. Do not fear about the coronavirus that is killing many people. Now, let me come with the fear, the power of fear. I, I, I investigated critically and I find that the fear has killed many. If you go to the quarantine localities where these people are being quarantined, those places where they are being quarantined, look at them very well. Before you enter there, there is another fear that enters you. That is the spirit of fear that comes into the world and begin to suck the life of people from them. And when you are not afraid, that, that power will not have anything against you. In my place here, there is one thing they normally do. Uh, those are diabolical people. They will come and say, um, I will deal with you. I will kill you. But when you begin to shift, shift for what they say, begin to uh, uh, worry for the problem of what they say. When they get their charm and bury in your house, they begin to walk. Mm -hmm. But when you rebook that person in the name of the Lord, I am telling you, I am a witness. I am a witness because I know where Amen. I am. I am a witness. Amen. And they have never. Amen. I pray to you all. Who are hearing our voice today that God Almighty, by His infinite mercy, will give us the grace to live according to His standard? But remember one thing without God, there is no life. With God, there is fullness of life. Yeah, yeah. When Amen. You have power, Amen. You have power, I pray to you that God Almighty will lift you up beyond measure in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Permit me to go more. Yeah. But the book of Psalm chapter 9 verse 10. Book of Psalm chapter 9 verse 10. It says, No harm will overtake you. No disaster right. will come to your tent. No harm okay. will overtake you. Okay. No disaster will overtake you. I pray that God Almighty will lift you up beyond measure to heal the whole world with his word, removing fear from our life so that we may be able to accept the Lord Jesus as our Lord and personal yeah. Savior. Well, in Jesus' mighty name, we have received it. Amen. 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 All right, that's a strong word, Pastor. Good luck. Thank you. Strong word. Do not fear. Do not fear. God is in control. That's what I heard. Do not fear. God is in control. Pastor DJ, Pastor DJ, uh, I want to say thank you so much for uh, being with us, broadcasting with us. Uh, Pastor DJ uh, has a international ministry already. Uh, I'm gonna let allow him ask him to tell us a little bit about it. He's broadcasting all across the world right now. Uh, Pastor DJ, please, would you minister to us? Yeah, sure. Uh, Pastor DJ, check of Elohim, uh, currently in Lansing, Michigan, but we broadcast out to Korea, um, Africa, uh, France, uh, Croatia, 
uh, pretty much a, a, a lot of different all around the U.S. here. Um, but it's but this has been, even though it's been a tragic moment, it's been a moment of transition and change, right? And and good change, right? And that God is really and still working through this whole process. And I've been hearing a, a huge narrative of like God is punishing us during this time. But the other part of that narrative is that God allows, sometimes he allows persecution and pestilence that we're dealing with like today, right? Not just to punish us, but it should push us into another realm. Yes. Right? What I mean by that, like if, if we look in the book of Acts in the first chapter, Jesus told them uh, to be his witnesses in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And you know what happened after he told them to do that? They just stayed put in Jerusalem, right? So there were a lot of there was a lot of persecution and pestilence that happened during that time to push them out of their comfort zones, right? God, for a lot of us, is pushing us out of our comfort zones. I, I praise God for you, Minister David, like even putting this thing together, like it's been a, a sign and a movement of what God is doing throughout this moment and that he's pushing us out, right? We got too comfortable. Where all of us got too comfortable in Jerusalem, we got too comfortable at home, we got too com comfortable in our comfort zones, and God is pushing us out into a place and an environment and an area to where we can be comfortable with being uncomfortable again, right? He said, I know Jerusalem is home, and I know you grew up there, but I need you to go out, go to the ends of the earth, and you can't do that just staying there at home. You can't do that just staying there and just preaching to just a few people, but use what I've given you to preach to the nations, to get my word out, to get this gospel to the ends of the earth, right? Too many of us get stuck and we were in a process to where we got stuck in these church buildings and these church routines and God the whole time was saying, go, right? Oh, you won't go? Okay, well, I'll allow this thing to happen and I'll allow this to happen to a point where it pushes us and it presses us to go. You think about the woman with the issue of blood, like she was dealing with this pestilence, with this sickness for so long, with this issue of blood for so long to the point where she said, I gotta get to Jesus. So she pressed her way to Jesus. It was some things that were allowed in her life to press her to the point to where she could put, to push her to the point to where she could press her way through the crowd to Jesus. And you think about her pressing her way through this crowd, she had to be, down on her knees as she's pressing her way through the crowd right just getting through the crowd and pushing people out the way but she had a focus and a mindset that she had to get to jesus jesus is trying to refocus us all in this moment to focus us back on him because he's the only source of healing just like evangelist good luck said he is the only source of peace he is the only source of healing he is the only source of life so in this moment, Jesus, I believe God is pushing us and allowing some things like this to happen to push us and press us to the place that we need to be, which is with him. And it has no, no zip code that we would associate with it, right? It's, it, he's pushing us out to the ends of the earth. And what I mean by that is that we want to associate it just with, the okay, God, you just don't have me here. Well, let me just stay here. And let me, let me, let me, you know, put my roots here and let me just do my thing here. But God is pushing us all to be mobile. God is pushing us all to go out to the ends of the earth. God is pushing and pressing us all to go to the next level. And he has everything you need. He's already placed everything that you need on the inside of you, but it needed to be a situation like this to get us to the point to where we could where we could be pressed and we could go out to the very places that he needed us to go, where we could preach to the very nations that we needed to preach to. Before this, we were preaching to 40, 50, 100, 200 people, but now God has us preaching to different countries, right? And I don't know if we would have done that if this hadn't happened, right? We probably would have eventually, but God said, no, I can't wait on you with some things that I've already orchestrated and operated and I need this thing to happen now and this if we think about our lives it's not just us it's not just church of Elohim that has gone through this transition and that God is pushing but he's pushing and pressing all of us to go deeper to go further to go to the ends of the earth and tell everybody about the good news of this crucified savior Jesus Christ amen amen
That's that's good, man. A church. I heard I heard Bishop Apuzi say the other day that uh, God is calling for a church without walls. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, yeah, and yeah, that's man. what I hear you say. We are a ch- because I heard someone else say the other day uh, that you know the place that we go worship is the temple. You know, it's it's the it's the it's a it's a location, yeah. but we are the church. Yeah, we're yeah. the church. Yeah, and so Absolutely. you know we got to go, like you said, Pastor. We have to go, go, go. Right. Uh, Pat, uh, uh, Minister Whitley, if you could, could you could you bring us another uh, worship song? Hallelujah. Um, I've been enjoying the ministry of all these wonderful men of God. You know, David, all you men of God, just a little over a year and a half ago, I was out of the physical building. Now, my prayer life was still my prayer life, but I I was walking in a form of rebellion where I didn't want to go into a church. But I'm thinking about all the people out there are out there right now that are watching this and listening to this. And this uh, pandemic has brought them to a place of trying to come back to God. Mm-hmm. So this song I'm going to sing, next song, uh, a prayer it reaches to these those who were out there like I was. And, and didn't know what to do, but God drew him by his spirit. The Bible says, we lift up the name of Jesus, he will draw all men to us. Yeah. Praise yeah. God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Thank you Lord. This is forgiving God a merciful God. Thank you, Lord. How can you forgive me when I've often gone astray? How can you? What's the get down? Think of me when I do things my way. Have the same excuse. The one who loved me first. Having my own desires. Renewing worldly first. You told me that you love me and I should make up my mind. You tell me, come back now, but I keep wasting time, feeling so very weak. You say I can be strong. I feel like gone too far. You tell me to come home. Yeah. You love me still. And I know this is real. And I am running back to you. Yeah. I see your standing there for me. Your arms are open wide. And I don't have to cry no more. You're standing here for me. And I am running back to you. Why do I go away when I know I am no good when I'm on my own? Amen. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank you so much. Praise God. Praise God. Um, right now, uh, uh, Pastor Terry, I would I would love if the people could hear a word of encouragement. Uh, if you could give us a, a short word of encouragement, we appreciate it, brother. Amen. Thank you, brothers. Um, I once again greet you in the lovely name of Jesus. Uh, today, when afternoon, I was thinking and I was talking to the Lord, and He gave me this word. Proverbs 15, 33. It says, fear of the Lord teaches a person to be wise. Humility precedes honor. Now, ask myself, no, what that got to do, you know? And he says, no, humbleness. And humbleness mm-hmm. became very strong because if you look at the church at the moment, a lot of the lights are turned off. The churches are closed. People are, are linking or rather, they're humbling themselves. Mm-hmm. They you need to humble yourself to love your neighbor. And I think one of the brothers said last week, the first love. 
and if you you can't say you love somebody and you don't humble yourself to somebody and you don't see the need of somebody and then you want to reach mm. god yeah. god is not he's a distant way he's yes he's this distant way but to see god do the love of god god you remember we must know we all have gifts but the fruits of the of the spirit is most important and one of them is love yeah yeah and when the, when i spoke to the lord the lord turned around to me and says you know the time when you and it took me back to the old days of you know the home cells and where we should come to homes and pray and with families those days were forgotten and it took me back he says why did my church change why did the people of god mm. change yeah because they they lost that intimacy with me he says mm. they lost that closeness with me and some people when they go to church is like more a social gathering yeah yeah we need to now humble ourselves and we don't even some people say i ask do you feel the anointing they don't feel the anointing because they're not in tune with the first love because of humble humble yourself to god okay what does humility does it's humility is is a true strength for it reaches into the kingdom of heaven mm-hmm. okay i'm saying it again and catch this okay humility is a true strength for it reaches into the kingdom of the heavens mm. okay so you you cannot have pride and think that you're going to reach heaven <laughs> and there's a lot of uh, especially it's hurtful now and i think i told my brother on the weekend of of what's coming out there from the kingdom what theology we hearing these days yeah, yeah and my brother was right people are putting instilling fear oh it's the last days only god knows that yeah jesus said i'll come as a, a thief of the night yeah men of god don't instill fear into men let them fear god first let them fear the lord first it'll it's a t- time to humble themselves and say let's go to grassroots levels now when you first became to know me said the lord you became to give me that love you didn't want to stop talking about me but you became like a days of it's more loud music is more the, the world it became into the church instead of the church of of ho- upholding the world and taking control of the world yeah right and it's it's causing it's becoming a, an issue like bringing the club into the church mm. wow. you know you can't you can't differentiate you can't bring the world system into our church our church shall always be the giant we shall be we became a sleeping giant and the lord says no i will humble you Yeah. and i will bring you back down to where i want you where i can now bring you on your knees and take with all those luxuries okay yeah all the malls Walt disney's clothes the hollywood's clothes oh yes you're going to follow uh, arnold schwarzenegger he's going to flab you now he's not that mr Miss- universe anymore i got a brother say that today we need to start humbling ourselves and stop you know as the brother said last last week our neighbors neighbors mean the other countries also yeah. we can't pick pick point and say no china did this america did this uh, russia did this stop that nonsense now yeah it's a devil is behind this with evil intentions yeah. get that right church get it right yeah yeah don't confess evil unto other people you confess faithful you confess love you confess things that will give life life and death is in the power of the tongue yeah yeah but the church has come Lacks the devil and created evil into the earth, and 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 surrendering to that evil, start humbling yourself, men of God and children of God. Don't let your pastors only doing the work. You need to get on your knees. Yeah. Pray for your president. Pray for your, for the MPs. They may be not making the right decisions sometimes, but who are you to judge? You get on your knees. For two or more gathers, thou be in the midst. Yeah. Okay. He made it now two or more by being in the house. Okay. Now, with this medium that we use, we touching nations now. Yeah. I never spoke in this medium before to a brother like David, got a wonderful smile. And I got a heart of gold. Got a DJ. I didn't know he's a DJ now. You know, now no, we know I got a disc jockey. <laughs> nice to meet you, brother. And brother Jay, and I got a neighbor next to me. Good luck. Amen. you men of god and we men of god we need to stand in unity and strength Amen. and fight this evil corruption that is created by man 
not by God. God is, yes, God can allow it. God can allow anything. If God wanted to bring judgment, listen to me, and I put this on Facebook, and I had a lot of arguments about it. I said, God sent this, uh, this virus. God doesn't send evil. Yeah. If God wanted to do judgment on earth, he just one word, and judgment will fall. That's good. And when he did judgment in the past, when he allowed things to be passed, if we read the word properly, we live by grace now. Yeah. We don't live by law before we live by law in the Old Testament. We live by grace now. Yeah. Jesus is the covering. Because Jesus, God won't come. By, the, the, the Trinity will not be separated. Believe me, men of God. The Trinity, you cannot separate the Trinity. You cannot right. take one against the other. They yeah. all work together. Yeah. Okay? If they work together, okay, would God go above Jesus? Or would Jesus go above God? Or would the Holy Spirit do anything? No, they won't. They work together in harmony. Mm -hmm. You understand? So we need to understand, humble ourselves. Let's start humbling ourselves. Let's get back to the first love we had, as you, as your brother said last week. Yeah. Humility is the first steps to us whole, wholeness. You really want to become wholeness. Start being humbling yourself. You know, the, the coronavirus has affected a lot of us, yes. Personally, it affected myself, and my wife is in essential services, so she has to go to work. She has to, she's in the food industry. Mm. It's a risk, but we pray daily, and she takes all the precautions necessary. But the biggest precaution she takes is because she's got a Bible in the desk. She goes and she reads the Bible. She anoints, she prays over every workers, all the trucks and whatever, and she says, I will stand firm for what my calling is. And she's an evangelist. Yeah. And let me tell you something. I've seen what this virus has done. People are more interested of, of fighting for alcohol and fighting for cigarettes and then depriving, taking those money, those like we get the rand, comparing to the dollar is a huge difference. You understand? And there's 350 rand that they, the, the government has, has given the poor. And fighting for that and then taking that to buy cigarettes and buy, see the devil. That's what the devil is going to do. He's going to run turmoil if we allow him to do it. It's mm -hmm. about time that we stand firm to our beliefs, yeah. stand firm, humble ourselves, respect the, the, the laws of the land. Yeah, Irrespective, yeah. they're standing for whatever reason, you will just pray for them. Yes, the coronavirus has closed done a lot of differences, especially in our community. I live in Johannesburg in South Africa, and um, currently we, there's quite a few deaths. We're re reaching about close to 150 now. And um, there's a close to 7,000 infected positive cases, and there's about 3,000 mm. um, recovered, uh, recoveries. But there's a, being a rapid uh, increase of the virus, close to 200 to 300 a day. And we're going to bring that to the Lord now and say, you know what, we need to, and people need to start listening. I'm sorry to say this. We're getting in a situation where there's certain areas in South Africa where they, they don't want to listen to, to the government and listen to the rules and follow the proper protocols, uh, stay at home and all. Those things are important. You know, yeah. listen to all the reports that you see on, on the news. We need to really, really humble ourselves, listen it's for your own good. And um, the, how this affected me, you know, um, this is, we, I started creating feeding schemes uh, where we interlink with other NGOs where people don't have food. And, um, and there's a lot of, um, initially when we started the lockdown, we are now level four. We're level four where 50% of workers can go return to work, but the strict uh, safety and uh, precautionary measures have to be taken. So yes, we are doing that, and um, there's, there's, you know, the most important thing now at the moment is fellowship. Fellowship, and we started different fasting and, and praying and having communion. The more often you have communion, the more better it is. And the Lord gave me this many years back, and I, we, do, we do a communion most often as possible. Because communion is so important. The body and the blood is very important. And there's one thing I'm going to leave now to tell you. We need to start taking, maybe our next meeting, we'll do communion together. And maybe we can bread, bread, um, 
uh, Reverend uh, David, Fred Bread in different areas of this world. We all intellect and stand in unity and stand in one accord, in one spirit, in one unity. Thank you, brother. Amen. 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 This is just beautiful. Uh, my spirit is full. Uh, I, I had a word that I wanted to share, but uh, brothers, it, 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 that's it. it you, you said it all. It's been really good. Thank you so much. Uh, Pastor uh, Evangelist, good luck. I would like for you to prepare to close us out in prayer. Um, one thing I want to highlight, I, I stayed up all night last night working on this message for whenever I'm going to preach next. And uh, one thing I do want to highlight, uh, when, when Jesus was in the boat with those disciples and said, go to the other side. Yeah, yeah. It, two, couple, well, more than a couple things, but two things I want to bring to light. That that storm, the Bible says, suddenly a storm came, yeah. a windstorm. And because it was on water, it was like a hurricane. And it was such that water was spewing all in the boat. And you have these experienced fishermen, these experienced men that have been on this lake many, many times. Okay. They're, they're on this lake and Jesus is fast asleep. Don't miss that. Don't miss that, brothers and sisters. Jesus is fast asleep. You get a touching picture of his humanity, this God man. This, this baby of Mary is fast asleep. And the men said, Jesus, no, no, I'll take that back. They say, in Mark's version, they say, Master, Master. Mm -hmm. See, good luck. I heard you talking about the name, that name, Jesus. They said, Master, Master, don't you care that we would perish? <laughs> Didn't you come to save us? Yeah. Right? John 3, 16, right? Nobody should perish, right? Don't you care that we should perish? All of a sudden, immediately, Jesus wakes up. And what does he say? In the Greek, in the Greek peace means shut up. <laughs> peace, peace, shut up. Storm, shut up and be still. Shut up and get away. Now, I want to use this peace be still in an application for today's life, right? So you look, look, at, look at one of the things that's ravishing our world, cancer, cancer. Jesus says, cancer, be still, right? We got diabetes that people are suffering with, be still. Yeah, We're yeah. suffering with high blood pressure. Speak to it. Yeah. Be still. Yeah. Speak to these infirmities in your body and your life. Claim the power of Jesus. Claim the blood of Jesus and speak to these infirmities that are afflicting, afflicting you. Speak to COVID-19. As you said, when your wife goes out, she's an essential worker and so is my wife. You pray. You said, God, I claim the blood. I claim that my wife will come back whole and clean. In yeah. Jesus' name, speak to it. Speak to the coronavirus. Be still. Yeah, yeah. And our, and our, one thing I found out in the United States is 1.2 million people that have been infected that we know of that have been affected with this coronavirus. 1.2 million, 70,000 deaths. I heard both of you say good luck and Pastor Terry. Both of you, you were saying a thousand, like low in the hundreds. There's yeah. 70,000 deaths in the United States. Yeah. Wow. Jesus. Peace be still. Yeah. And, and, and New York, you're talking about uh, my wife is a transportation worker in New York. There's been a hundred deaths within the transportation workers in New York. 100 plus and and pastor pastor dj 60 percent of the deaths have been black folks yeah yeah now we only make up about 10 percent of the population yeah, yeah maybe 13 on a good day 13, yeah. but 60 percent have been black folks wow 
peace be still. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Evangelist, good luck. Evangelist, good luck. Yeah. Take us out with the word of prayer, please. Minister David, can I say something real quick? Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead, sir. Just a few seconds. Here. So, like, I, I can't even take credit for this word. My mother said she, she had a vision, right? And the Lord told her that the gospel needs to be spreading as wild as the coronavirus is spreading right now. Mm, that's good. So what, what you that's a good word. In the gospel, we we need to be spreading it just as just as quick as the coronavirus is spreading right now. Amen. Been it around the world. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Pastor, good luck. Evangelist, good luck. Please lead us to the throne. Oh, gracious Father, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. We saw you because there is no one like you. Thank you, Father. You are the king of all kings. You are the Lord of lords. You are the everlasting Father. You are the creator of the whole universe. You are the mighty man in battle. You are the ocean divider. You are the lion of tribe of Judea. The kings of all kings. You are greater yes, than the great. You are mighty than the mightier. You are holy than the holiest. You are the Amen. almighty. We bow before your holy throne, Abba Father, because there is no one like you. Yeah. We thank you because you are the Elohim. We thank you because you are the mighty Father. We are here for you because we know you are there for us. Yeah. We yes, know Jesus. that you are the backbone of the Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord, without you, there is no hope in this earth. Without you, there is no life, Lord. We are here because you are alive, oh Lord. We are calling upon you, upon the whole earth. Go to U.S., go to London, go to uh, South Africa, go to Italy, go to Spain, go to Turkey, go around the world, go to Nigeria, go to, go to Ghana, go yeah. all the parts of the country of the world. Yeah. Release your healing in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. But uh, by your name that is above every other name that I yes. see mentioned, of name, every new power, we command the power of coronavirus. Uh, get out of the world right now in the mm -hmm. name of Thank Jesus Christ. We are decreeing upon the ones who have infected. Healing by the power in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah, the yes. only healing man that can sanctify the soul of Thank man is the blood of Jesus. I therefore release the blood of Jesus upon the infected persons. Wherever they are right now, let the blood of Jesus speak for you. Let the blood of Jesus intercede over your head. In the name of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. heavenly brothers and the angels of heaven, the healing daughters and the healing nurses, the angels of heaven, I send you upon these countries of the world, upon the hospitals where they have been quarantined this moment. Release your, release your healing, 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 release your healing. Release your healing. in the Thank name you. of Jesus Christ. Yes. Yes. The power that is holding coronavirus in the world. I command Hallelujah. you by the power in the name of Jesus, cease to operate. Lose your power yeah, in yeah. the name of Jesus Christ. I command you, whatever angle you are coming from, from the sea, from the moon, Hallelujah. from the sun, from the air, beneath the earth, wherever you are coming from right now, I decree in the name of Jesus Christ. Back your luggages and leave the world alone in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. We thank you, Father. Amen. We bless Amen. your holy thank name, you. the King of Kings. We, we thank you. We bless you, the one. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you, you, the Lion of the tribe of Judah. We bless you, the Asian Divider. We say that you receive all the glory. Receive all the honor. Let your name and love be glorified in all the earth. Let your name be magnified in all the earth. Let the earth arise and Give you the honor that you desire. Let the earth arise, O oh Lord, and give you praise. So that at the end, your name and glory be glorified. Hallelujah. Shout, for being with us, 
we are happy for being with us, Daddy. You are uh, who are we that that manifests with you using us in this greater way? You manifested through us in this kind way that we never desire. Daddy, we bless you because you love us. You care for us. I could imagine sinners love like us. You draw us nearer to you and you make us your match base. Daddy, I really bless your holy name. Daddy, when I look at what you did in the life of Elijah, when he did, he stand up and eat for the battle is still far. Still stand up and eat because there are things that you are going to pass. Daddy, we know there are things you are going to pass. Give us the courage, give us the power of the world. In the name of Jesus Christ, I cover every of the minister with the blood of Jesus Christ. I cover them with the blood of Jesus. No we compassion against them shall prosper in the name of Jesus Christ. No altar that will rise against them shall stand in the name of Jesus Christ. Because you are their sheep, you are their guide, you are their protector. Surround them with a the wall of protection. So that at the end, that is your name alone will be glorified in their ministry, in their families. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. 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 I Amen. Want Amen. Us to do something here. I just want us to do something here. There are people hearing our voice from different parts of the world. There are many who have not given. Give their life to Christ. Like I want them to give their life to Christ so that they will be set. I want us to do the same thing, Lord Jesus Christ. I know you died for me. I confess that you really died for me, that I have sinned against you. Have mercy upon me. Redeem me, O oh Lord. Help me that I may stand for you to the end. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. As you have prayed that prayer, Amen. Lord, Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Thank you for that prayer. Beautiful prayer. And just like Evangelist Goodluck said, if you need and you want Jesus in your life, all you have to do is to cry out to Jesus. Yeah. Cry out Amen. to Jesus and ask him to come into your life. Mm -hmm. Ask him to forgive you for your sins and let him know that you're going to dedicate your life to him and that you're going to follow him and Jesus Absolutely. will come and make himself known to you. I promise that. Yeah. He will come and make himself known to you. God, I'm asking you right now, if there's someone out here that is a lost sheep, a sinner without a savior, and he calls, he or she calls on your name, Jesus, yeah. I'm asking you that you would manifest yourself in some way only that you can so that you can make yourself real to this individual. We thank you, Jesus, and it's in your name that we ask this and we request this. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Brothers Hallelujah. and sisters, uh, I want to say thank you to these great men of God here. Uh, if your pastor in your local area would like to become a part of what we're doing, uh, send me a message on Facebook. Uh, we are broadcasting live on YouTube and several other platforms across the world. So it's a great opportunity for your pastor to share the, the uh, word of God. Also, we certainly would love to have some women uh, on our panel. So if you're a, a woman preacher, a woman pastor, and you would love like to come in, we would love to have you. Uh, and then also, we will be back, this group here, if the Lord tarries and says the same, we'll be back here on Friday. Back here Friday at 3 o'clock Eastern. Uh, and then um, uh, next week, we have a, a, a wonderful lineup for you as well. Thank you very much for tuning in to our broadcast. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you.